It's a question about the relation, the relationship between the personal and the poli- and the political in her writing, if you like, or just the role of the personal in her writing, which was always so present. And I think rather than um, the interest of her writing leaking out into her personal life, it goes the other way so much, where she was always declared that she, there was no boundary in her life between her writing and her and her life. And, and what else could you do but write about your life? That's that's what writing was about. Um, And like lots of women writers of the period, she was really refusing what she saw as the kind of false modesty imposed on women that they should be quiet about what happens to them and that they should not talk about the intense intimate details of their relationships with other people, including men who, of course, could write about their relationships with women. Um, But it was just much more provocative and offensive even if a woman did it, if she was seen to be betraying the secrets of the bedroom effectively. The autobiography, it's, I mean, in some ways we can read it as a culmination of so much of Hewitt's work before then, because so much of her work is interested in her own experience, and then we get the autobiography on top of that. It li- it's like it draws together all the threads of her poetry and her theatre, and her novels as well to some degree, and, and, to, and returns to the source of them and writes out the source of them in a kind of more direct way. Um, so it, it's always interesting looking at the ways in which the autobiography replays the tropes of the poetry, or the poetry replays the tropes of the autobiography. Uh, but it's a very romantic book. It uses the conventions of the romance, of romantic conventions, very uh, deliberately, um, and begins in that beautiful Wordsworthian way of evoking a, an idyllic childhood of lost innocence, um, using the everlasting present tense in that book. It's all written in the present tense, which is you know, extraordinary. Of course, creative writing teachers can tell you never to do that because it's a trap that first writers often fall into, but Hewitt does it magically so that we are always in the past with her in this intense way. So the past is present immediately for us in this very, very detailed and intense kind of way. Her styles are in some ways so similar to each other and in some ways so diverse. Uh, she was, as she called herself, a Jill of all trades because she could write across genres very, very well. And it was really only in her later years that she returned to writing prose and talked about enjoying writing prose. I think in many ways what she's going to be remembered for is that ability because she really distinguishes herself in the 20th century. There's very few other writers like her that really sustain great critical success in more than one genre.